Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with fresh salmon cakes. That's right, we've done these before, but we've used canned salmon, which is how I normally do it. But every once in a while, I do like to splurge and use fresh fish for this. And if you happen to be wondering what the difference is between salmon cakes and salmon patties, there isn't any. Totally the same thing. In fact, sometimes I'll just call them both salmon patty cakes, which I really think your younger guests will enjoy. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we're going to want to do is saute our vegetables because these got to cool before they go in the mix. So in a pan over medium heat with a little bit of olive oil, we're going to saute some finely minced onions, some red peppers, and some celery. You're also going to want to throw a nice big pinch of salt in there. So this would be your proverbial, as they say in Louisiana, holy trinity. And we're just going to cook this until the onions kind of turn translucent and soften up a little bit, which is going to take maybe five minutes. And this is what mine look like. And in fact, it looks a lot more golden brown than it really is. That's actually the red pepper kind of bleeding into the onions. So that explains its unusually beautiful color. And at this point, what we want to do is toss in our capers. And I do want to give those a couple minutes saute to kind of dry them out a little bit. I think that kind of intensifies the flavor, turns up the brininess factor a little bit. So we'll stir in those capers. Those were obviously well-drained. And we'll cook those for a couple minutes. And at that point, all you have to do is turn off the heat and let this mixture cool to room temperature while we prep our salmon, which is the next step. So like I said, we're gonna use fresh fish this time. So I have just under a pound and a half of fresh, wild Pacific salmon. And yes, frozen wild salmon is perfect. And all those little pin bones have been pulled out, but we do need to take the skin off, which is super easy, especially in this case, since we don't care what it looks like, we're gonna chop this up. So all I'm gonna do is cut down with my knife like this till I hit the skin, which is very leather-like, it's very tough. So as soon as I feel that knife hit the skin, I'm going to turn it, flatten that blade out, and just cut right across like that. And if you have a little tear, or you don't do it perfectly, or you leave a little too much meat on the skin, so what? You can always trim it up. Very easy to do, okay? You can just go back and get anything you missed if you want. And then once we've removed the skin, we're going to chop this up. But what I like to do before I start chopping is kind of make some large cubes. So I'm just going to slice it across, and then turn it this way, cut it in some big chunks. And then we're going to switch to the old cleaver and use that to do the final chopping until we have something that looks like this. So basically something about the same size you'd use if you were making sausage and you were doing a coarse ground pork, okay? So that looks good. Let's go ahead and transfer that into a bowl and we will start adding the rest of the ingredients. So we'll go ahead and toss in our vegetables, which should be cool by now. I'm also gonna toss in some finely minced garlic. I intentionally did not cook that with the vegetables. I want that raw in here. And then we're gonna add a big spoon of mayonnaise, real mayonnaise, don't use fake mayonnaise. We'll also add a nice shake of cayenne, a big pinch of freshly ground black pepper. We're also gonna need some salt, of course. And then for our binder, just a little bit of panko breadcrumb. Any fine breadcrumb or cracker crumb will work here. I'm also gonna throw in a nice big pinch of Old Bay. And I said Old Bay, not really Old Bay. So if there's more dust on the can than spice in the can, go get a new one. And then last but not least, a little touch of Dijon mustard. And at that point, we can mix this thoroughly. And as I mix this up, let me state the very obvious fact that something like this just begs for adaptation. I mean, you go Asian style, Spanish style, Italian style, just lots of different ways you could flavor this. You guys are the William Blakes of your fresh salmon cakes. So use that poetic license to make this your own. But anyway, we're gonna mix that up. And once that's done, let's go ahead and cover that tightly with plastic wrap and let this chill for at least an hour or two before we try to form the cakes. Okay, we wanna give those flavors time to meld and for that breadcrumb to hydrate a little bit. So if you just can't wait, you just have a wicked severe case of the munchies, that's fine, you could shape them now. But you'll see, if you pull this mixture out after an hour or two, it will have firmed up nicely, and it will just be a lot easier to work with. So I'm gonna take a spoon and kind of divide this into four sections. I'm gonna do four large cakes, you can do eight small ones. And what I like to do before the final shaping is just kind of portion it into four lumps, four roughly shaped balls, and that way I can make sure my mixture is divided evenly, if not, I can pull some off one and add it to another. And by the way, as you can see, I dusted that plate lightly with panko. And then once those are set, I'm gonna give them a little patting down and we'll dust the tops with a little panko. And like I said, any breadcrumb is gonna work. And at that point, we'll grab each one and give it the final shaping. And I want something about an inch thick, three quarters to an inch thick. And just like doing meatballs, if your fingers are a little wet, this is easier to shape. And then once you've caked those into patties or patted those into cakes, you have two choices. You can chill them until you're ready to use, or you can fry them now, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna cook those over medium heat and a little bit of olive oil for about, I don't know, I'm gonna totally guess and say about three minutes aside. 
And I know most of you are going to cook them through, but don't be afraid to leave them a little medium inside, just like a salmon filet. And another quick tip here, you can kind of see it cooking up the side like a hamburger. And when it looks like it's cooked up about a third of the way, I'll flip it over and I'll finish the other side. And really, that's it. I guess you could check with the thermometer, but I can't be bothered. So right about here, I thought it was looking pretty good. So I'm going to flip that back over to whatever I think is the best looking surface. And at that point, we're ready to eat. No, you don't have to let it rest. I know, one of those rare times. So I'm going to plate that up, serve it with a beautiful tomato salad, cherry tomatoes, and green zebra. Oh, those aren't unripe. Those are ripe. They're supposed to be that color. And we'll serve that with a nice wedge of fresh lemon and a big old spoon of our famous remoulade sauce, which I can't believe I've never shown you. But don't worry, that's going to be the next video. And I'll finish by garnishing with a little crisscross of chive, you know, in case any food bloggers show up. And that fresh salmon cake is done. I'm just going to dig in after drizzling over a little fresh lemon juice and eating it with our classic remoulade sauce, which is just fancy culinary for tartar sauce. In fact, there's no joke, the difference between tartar sauce and remoulade sauce, a tablecloth. And don't worry if you didn't get that one. Very few people did. But old restaurant jokes aside, this really is a magnificent salmon cake. Just a nicer texture, a richer taste, a moister experience. Like I said earlier, I hope you really try to find the wild salmon. All right, you want to stay away from that cheap farm salmon? I mean, come on, if you're buying your salmon at a store that also sells tires and socks, that's really not the stuff you want. So go find some really nice wild salmon, either fresh or frozen, and give these delicious salmon cakes a try. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.